Hey guys, today we got to sit down with Frank Angelino, the head honcho, the big cheese here at Calabro Cheese Factory here in East Haven, Connecticut. He showed, told us about the history of the building, the company, the cheeses, and he showed us the production area. It's gonna be a really nice video. I hope you enjoy. See you later. So we started the business go. in 1953. My uncle and my grandfather uh, started the business. Um, my uncle and my mother emigrated here from Sicily back in 1949, soon after World War II uh, was finished. My grandfather was already here. Um, he was actually uh, here, be uh, he, he had come from uh, Sicily and over here and then World War II broke out and he couldn't return back home so he was kind of stuck here. He couldn't come directly into America, he went through Venezuela so he had to go to Venezuela first, wow. he stayed there for a year and a half uh, trying to accumulate some money and to get some passage into the States by boat. Okay. He was actually working in the shipyards in Venezuela. So after a year, year and a half, uh, he, he had gone with his first cousin from Sicily and they were working there. His first, his cousin said enough is enough. I can't, I can't wait anymore. So we, st we had some relatives that had gone to Buenos Aires in Argentina. So he wow. went over there to catch up with them. It was easier going to Argentina than coming to the United States. Okay. Wow. So he went to Argentina and they split. And that's how the two families, the two branches, what I have cousins in, in Buenos Aires, and of course, and then we had cousins in, in South Philly, Philadelphia. That's where my grandfather was trying to get to, South Philly. Finally did. Uh, long story short, he finally managed to get to uh, Philadelphia, and they brought him up to Stratford, Connecticut, where he met, uh, reunited with his uh, uh, brother-in-law amazing and then he worked in the country fellow creamery for i don't know how many years when my uncle came and my mother came uh, here in this country he he went over there picked them up from ellis island brought them he had already uh, purchased a home in stratford so he brought them to stratford and uh you know slowly they were rebuilding their lives yeah, yeah. and then um and then he went to work for Cuchafello with his father and his uncle. And then my uncle decided to start it. Let's, let's go out on our own. Oh, but they great. had cheese making, uh, you know, I would say talents, but they knew how, enough to make cheese because in Sicily, they, they were making cheese. Yeah. Very, very small enough. Like right. They had maybe four or five cows. They had a few goats. Uh -huh. um, my family owned two of the largest pieces of property in that little area. And they were producing olives for olive oil, grapes for wine. Wow. Um, they were they had some uh, cows that were making cheese. So Very resourceful. Yeah. yeah. Right? So they would, that's how they would... Uh, so when they... When my uncle and my grandfather started in 1953, we actually started in the back of our house, <laughs> in the garages. So hmm. twice a week, my grandfather would drive to Yonkers, pick up some cheese, uh -huh. the mozzarella and everything, bring it back to Stratford, and that's how they would they would pet it. Oh, okay. Wow. And they were making a little sausage behind our house. They Yum. Were, you were doing that. Uh, they were buying some ice cream, they were doing that, they were buying some ravioli and they were selling that. So they were making a little, um, you know, whatever, uh, like product a little, list yeah. of different items. They, so they, they, they were selling that and in those days, there were no supermarkets to speak of, right? There were yeah. no, there were, there were Italian stores, but the majority of their sales were directly to the home. Because in those days of Bridgeport, Meriden, Norwalk, Danbury. Big towns. Big towns, but big families. Yeah. That lived in two, three, four family houses. Dwellings. Wow, sure. So a block of these houses, well, not a, you know, for every single house, but if you could sell four or five houses in that one block, it's like selling a store. Yeah. A yeah. small store. And that's how they would do it. Wow. So it was very normal. To, yeah. have, to call the cheese guy. Sure. To deliver uh, whatever you need. So they were, they, were, they were making a living. You know, my grandfather and my uncle, the, the territory was spreading a little bit wider. So finally, it got to be too much 
to be behind our house. <laughs> it was just, we were, they were starting to get complaints from neighbors because the, the truck was starting up in the morning and all below. We met Matty Gambardella and they decided to make a deal and merge the two companies 50-50. Oh, wow. So Matty had the production capability. Sure. He was making, just, it, we, the plant was in Fairhaven on uh, Oakley Street. It was, this was in the late, late 50s and maybe a year they did it, but they were outgrowing even that plant that wow. we had over here. So wow. they bought a plant up in Wells River, Vermont. And Frank, you, you've you been here since the beginning, correct? Like you've seen everything from everything you talked about, yeah, you've so, seen kind of happen, right? Yeah. No, yeah. I, the business was... Smells amazing. This is our no power parlor. Oh, awesome. So all our milk is local. All comes in 90 miles uh, around us, all Connecticut milk. We get about uh, four tankers a day. Wow. Four tankers. A day. Four tankers. Woo More cheese. Is that is also known? More cheese. <laughs> oh, it smells like milk. It's like heaven. So this is all hand dipped uh, regatta. Oh, it smells so good.
Is that the is that the way right there? No, that's no. a cooling brine tank. Oh, okay. This is a, a cooling tunnel for fresh fruits and all. Fresh mozzarella. Oh my god, this is so cool. So it takes about an hour to go down the tunnel, come out of here and go here before it's ready to pop. Okay. Thanks for the packaging area. Uh-huh. 